I'm Stephanie Jones, Director of eBusiness at the SEMA Data Co-op. I've worked hands-on with data standardization since 2003. I've had the opportunity to learn from and work beside some of the folks instrumental in shaping the standards in the early years. I've designed systems and published thousands of data files using the standards and have taught several courses to share my cultivated knowledge. I hope you find useful information in this video that can assist in better understanding the standards and how to use them to benefit your organization. Okay, let's dig into challenges of communicating and differentiating universal fit parts in the standards. So let's take a step back and review what a universal part is. The term universal part uh, can cover a lot of ground. Um, it's pretty broad in the way that we see it used. There's non-vehicle, which would cover items like tools, t-shirts, uh, garage furniture, or lubricants, things like that. Um, secondly, we see semi-custom products. So items that go on a vehicle but are more a uh, one size fits all or a small, medium, large, or maybe even automotive belts that come in five sizes. And then the third type of universal fit part that we see are items that are supporting items that are dependent on something else. So hardware, brackets, straps, clamps, things of that nature. So in the standards today, uh, when we're going to distinguish a part as being uni universal fit, um, there's only a couple of things that we can do. One, in the item segment in pies, we can use the ACES application yes-no flag to signify whether or not there will be accompanying uh, applications for the part number. And then secondly, in the PADB, there are some parts, uh, some part types that specify the attribute universal fit as a yes, no, uh, right in the attribute segment. So that's about what we've got available for us in PIES today. Now, what we don't have is data in an ACES file, right? And the absence from having this part number in an ACES file can lead us into potential challenges uh, for universal parts and, and some ideas come to mind. You know, one is the omission from an ACES file a disadvantage in selling universal fit products because they may not be part of a year make model lookup. So on a typical retail website, you know, think about it. The year make model uh, drill down questions are a lot of times the very first thing on those pages. So it may be a disadvantage not having a year make model tied to that universal fit part because it would be absent from that lookup. Secondly, what about receivers that may use ACES files to drive part setup in their system? So potentially that receiver may not be able to get that part set up properly in their system. And then third, there are some receivers that do not subscribe to the PADB, so those that are utilizing the universal fit flag from the PADB would not be able to um, use that. So that leads us to a question. Do we want to go ahead and map our universal fit products in ACES or not? This is something that we commonly get asked. So where do we draw the line? on mapping ACES or not mapping ACES. Best practices suggests not mapping an ACES, but is this a disservice to these products? As an example, let's look at shifter knob and shifter arm examples. So typically, items like these would be considered universal fit. The only problem here is that it doesn't exactly apply to every vehicle. So these products wouldn't work for a column gear shift vehicle. And the knobs here will fit most shifter arms, but those shifter arms only fit most transmissions, probably not all of them. So we're looking at more like an 80 to 90% coverage of the trucks that these products would work for. So I would consider these um, as semi-custom items. So 
I'm not sure that there's a real definitive answer here as to yes or no to map, so let's go a little bit further. So let's argue a couple of reasons why we would want to map these products. One, these really truly do have fitment, even if a big percentage of vehicles are covered. Secondly, having fitment data and application data available may eliminate an ordering issue such as someone picking the wrong fit and this could save money in the long run processing an order and having it returned. And then third, the product would then be available on the year make model vehicle lookup on some of those websites we talked about earlier. So because the data is more accessible and the part number is more accessible, uh, this could lead to a sale. So let's talk about the downside on mapping these products. If we go ahead and we map these into ACEs, it may, one, lead to very large files. The many variations on the knobs and the arm combinations mean that a lot of nearly redundant information is going to be included in that ACEs file. It's relevant to proper part selection, though. Secondly, some data receivers may not want to manage so much data for only one type of product for one brand. And third, it can be difficult to transfer such a large amount of data. It makes it very cumbersome and hard to send, and it's hard for receivers to consume that data into their system. So what other options may we have to handle uh, scenarios like this? Well, we could consider utilizing the ASM field that is the application summary uh, description field in PIES. And you would have to ask yourself, is this proper usage of this description type? And does it give equal selling opportunity for this universal fit product? So all in all, the standards leave it up to you and your data receivers to decide if it makes sense to map ACES catalog data for products such as this. There is no definitive answer. Many times, universal fit products can be set apart from other products through leveraging attributes, descriptions, market copy, and digital assets. And when I say leverage, I mean really use the different types of descriptions that are available, make smart, informative descriptions and bullet points, utilize attributes. They're very powerful to further define characteristics about your product, and they're searchable. And we've already talked about images in other videos. They're worth a thousand words. So good images and good digital assets will make a big difference as well. All of this will help increase your consumer's confidence so that they feel informed and can make a good buying decision. So we've spent quite a bit of time discussing universal fit uh, product challenges. So I want to end with a quick statistic. Um, this is a query out of the SDC system. We've got nearly 70% of suppliers in the system that have what's considered a universal fit product. Nearly 10% of our overall database is considered a universal fit product. So the question is universal fit items an important part of sales? According to that statistic, I would say yes. So let's summarize. Make sure that you're leveraging the description, attribute, and digital asset segments in PIES. This will help your customers determine and distinguish part numbers from each other. And lastly, Take time to determine if mapping out your universal fit product makes sense. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.